What's up guys, GT here. So a few days back I asked you guys if you guys had any questions that you'd like me to answer. So thank you for everybody who put their questions down in the comments box in the previous video. In case you have more questions that you'd like me to answer, please put them down in the comment section below for this video. And hopefully when I get some time, I'll get to them. <laughs> time is always a challenge with me if you haven't figured it out by now. So anyways, before we jump into the Q&A, I want to give an honorable mention to Johnny150480 who has made a contribution towards the channel by donating to my PayPal account. Thank you so much. And in case you uh, want to get an honorable mention on this channel, please go ahead and donate to the account to keep the channel up and running. Or if you're feeling that you want me to look at a couple of your videos in case you're using my presets, please put the links down in the comment section. I'd love to watch them and feature them on this channel as well. So let's start with the questions. The first question is by the man himself, Johnny150480 asks, Gurtej, what are your plans for future related to making music? Any band you work with, do you also write songs? Well, I have written a lot of songs in the past and I do keep, uh, you know, slipping riffs here and there and I have a folder full of riffs like any other guitarist in the world. I have written many original tracks in the uh, past years as well. I have actually went into a studio and recorded four original tracks of my own, which I wrote, composed and sang as well, which led me to the conclusion that I cannot sing for the life of me. And but with the help of a little bit of auto tune and a lot of practice, we got through and recorded four original tracks. I haven't put them up on the channel yet. They are in Hindi, but in case you guys are interested to hear them, I'd love to put them up and let me know in the comment section below. Uh, do I work with any band? Not at the moment. I have been with many bands in the past and I'll briefly talk about them in the next question. So hopefully that answers your question. I do plan to put up original music as well on this channel. I haven't done so yet because purely because the, the audience space was too small, but I feel now I have enough support from you guys to put up some original so that you guys can check it out. So stay tuned on the channel so that you can hear the original music as well. Next question, do you play in a band or online collabs or mostly a bedroom player? What guitar forums do you use? They seem to be dying a death these days. Looks like you have a great man cave in there. How did you get away with that, Mrs. Weiss? Let's just tackle the easiest part first. <laughs> So one of the main reasons this channel is up is because of the missus. So uh, she's been extremely supportive in terms of letting me do my thing, having my own space, having my own space to record and to you know create a YouTube channel as well. You see, in the past, I was just in this rabbit hole where I was just practicing and practicing, hoping that I will improve and become so, so good one day that I would start my own music channel or a YouTube channel. But I was getting nowhere, to be honest. And that's where my wife said to me that, you know, why don't you start doing what you can? Put up the music that you can put up right now and keep learning alongside. And that way you are also being happy and also contributing towards your learning as well. So if I can give you any advice, that would be it. If you are thinking of starting a YouTube channel, go ahead and do it. You know, it doesn't matter how good you are or how good you want to be. It's about what you can do and how you can feel happy doing that. In the end, if, if it gives you any sort of pleasure and happiness doing something on a YouTube channel, you should be doing that and not spending hours and hours sitting down and practicing, to be honest. So she's one of the main reasons that this channel is up. Um, do I play in a band? Not at the moment. I have played with many bands earlier. The first band that I was part of was called Prestorica. It were, I joined the band around 2002, 2003. We've toured all over the country playing stuff like uh, Maiden, Megadeth, Metallica, and you know we got pretty popular and it was a great time of my life. Uh, we in fact won one of the first national level competitions in India called Campus Rock Idols. And as a reward of that, we got to open for uh, one of the international acts uh, that came down to India, which was pretty rare at that time because, you know, we didn't have that much exposure of international bands coming down to India. So we got to open for this band called Rasmus, which was really, really good. It was one of the best gigs that I've ever played in. Uh, after that, I was bit by the corporate bug and I started to make a living, as they call it. <laughs> and after around two or three years of void of music in my life, I again felt the need to be in a band. And I kind of got along with similar, uh, I got along with a couple of my friends who were in a similar spot in life and we formed a band called Antriksh. Yes, this band. Um, and uh, we also came out with an album. I was with the band for almost four years and uh, then I decided to move to Australia. Uh, the band is still out there and it's making some great music. I'll put some links in the description box so that you guys can check it out. 
if you want to hear the album i also put uh, it's available on itunes it's available on pretty much every uh, streaming platform like spotify youtube i'll put links in case you want to hear it keep in mind it's in hindi and it was the first kind of prog edgy sort of a uh, attempt in hindi rock which really really made us uh, you know shine out of other bands as well to be honest online collabs uh, i have done one collab so far and i'm open to doing more time is always of the essence and always a challenge with me in terms of since i'm not doing this full time um, it's hard to keep up with everybody who's doing this full time so as you can imagine it takes me a little bit more time to do an online collab as such and for me i think i'd rather spend that time creating tones and creating presets which you guys can download and use and uh, but i'm not against it to be honest i would love to do more collabs on this channel which forums do i use i use a lot of them ernie ball music man forums is where i am active as well and i'm pretty much active on the fractal audio forums as well and on the fractal audio facebook uh, <laughs> and on the fractal audio facebook groups as well that's a tongue twister and uh, whenever the, uh, i do post links of my videos and i do post uh, whenever i can help somebody out on the forums i'm also active on reddit in some of the subreddits hopefully that answers your question next one how come your process to sharing your knowledge on a youtube channel i mean the process to sharing to other people for me sharing knowledge is the best accomplishment a human can give thanks for the knowledge i have learned from your videos all along First of all, thank you so much. Uh, this comment comes from France, I believe, and thank you so much for asking that question, and thank you so much for your feedback. It really, really means a lot to me. So, how did I come to the process of sharing on YouTube? So, I always wanted to start a YouTube channel, and if you go back to the earlier videos on this channel, it's mostly covers. What happened was I was trying out uh, many presets from the Exchange, and what I found out is most of those presets. uh required you know user caps or stuff which i had to purchase and buy the preset wouldn't work without it to be honest and i'm absolutely fine if you want to make a living with uh, you know selling your work which which is absolutely okay there's nothing wrong with that but for me i felt that uh, as a user i should be able to download the preset and use it but then i could not use it because it had paid caps or paid preset packs so what i did as an outcome is i thought why not start doing something which is completely 100% out of the box out of the xfx and share that knowledge with the people and uh, it's honestly your feedback that kept it going and i also stumbled upon leon tots channel which was a huge huge inspiration for me leon whatever you're doing is absolutely fantastic never stop doing it your work is beyond commendable and it has really helped me and thousands of other guitar players across the world to get an understanding of tone understanding of gear so amazing work and to be honest it's one of the main reasons that uh, i started sharing on the youtube channel and uh, it's amazing feedback like this that keeps me going so keep that love flowing guys and uh, it's really really awesome to see when when my preset can help somebody to get a particular tone they're looking for or get you closer to the tone you're looking for so i really love sharing to be honest sharing is really caring to be honest <laughs> hopefully that answers your question next one here's my question for you what do you do to keep your guitar polished and clean and so shiny in your videos Are you using a secret polish sauce? Wink, wink. And how do you maintain your guitar? Fantastic question. So let's get the guitar for a second here. Now, Ernie Ball makes fantastic guitars. There's no doubt about them. And uh, you ask anybody, they will vouch for that statement that I just said. And this guitar in particular, the JP15, is an absolutely fantastic build. And uh, the quality of the build on this is so fantastic. And if you see the back of the neck the you can see the the flame top from the roasted maple neck and the etching and the binding on the the maple top here um and the wood grain is absolutely phenomenal so i don't do pretty much to maintain it uh, to you know make it shine in the video to be honest i just clean it with a cotton cloth and it looks really really fantastic no matter what angle i shoot from to be honest i make sure i'm not shining di light directly on it because obviously you get that shine out of it uh this guitar is a matte finish guitar so i cannot apply any polish on the body whatsoever so i usually just clean it with a cotton cloth and uh, it's tricky to get inside these areas over here but if you have a trim system you mentioned that you had the same guitar so put in your tremolo bar and press it down so that your strings become loose and then you can easily insert your cloth in there 
learn this handy trick from uh, Tyler from Music is Win. Again, fantastic guitar channel. Uh, how do I maintain the guitar? Change your strings uh, occasionally, uh, every couple of months. For me, I think I use Ernie Ball regular slinky strings. For the neck, uh, for the fretboard, I use Dunlop Lemon Oil. Now. Be careful with this one, you will hear mixed reviews from people whether you should use lemon oil on roasted maple necks. It even says on the, you know, the print here that do not use this on maple necks. But I checked with Ernie Ball themselves and this is fine to use on roasted maple neck as long as we do not use too much of it. And basically the idea is what I do and do not quote me on this, what I do, do your research before using this, is that I put a little bit of the, on, on the fretboard uh, when I change my strings, make sure it's not touching any other part of the guitar. I put a little bit of this and keep it for a couple of minutes and then quickly wipe it off with a cotton cloth. What that will do is really make the wood grain shine out a little bit more in the roasted maple and you will get that beautiful orange tint in the neck which is so so amazing to watch. Use this at your own discretion, do a bit of research but from my experience it's fine to use. For the back of the neck I would recommend nothing other than Birchwood KC True Oil and Birchwood KC Gunstock Wax. These are two fantastic products. You can find them pretty much in eBay anywhere in the world. These are fantastic to maintain the back of your neck and to give it a wax and polish. Now plenty of tutorials out there on the internet as to how to do it. Hopefully that answers your question. That's how I maintain my guitar. All right, coming back. Uh, other than your excellent channel, what resources do you recommend in order to learn the fundamentals of guitar tone creation? Fantastic question and fantastic feedback. Thank you so much. I am absolutely, absolutely blown away that you guys can learn something from me who is also learning at the same time. So thank you so much for that feedback. Uh, there are a lot of places to start with. So check out some other YouTube channels uh, around tone. I think Leon's channel is fantastic. Leon Todd's channel is fantastic. So if you haven't checked it out, Go ahead and do so. He's got fantastic tutorials on gear and his diversity in gear is absolutely fantastic. So go ahead and do check it out. Check out a lot of forums as well. You will probably find a lot of answers for the tone you're looking for. Sometimes it's the, you know, it's the artist himself who comes on the forums and comments usually as to what tone or what piece of gear they use to get that tone. So to give an example, when I dialed in the Top Gun uh, theme from the Top Gun Anthem, I actually came across a forum post by the man Steve Steven himself who actually put out what amp and what cabs he used which was absolutely fantastic to read and it's stuff like that which is really really rare to find and when you find it it's like it blows your mind away it's so so fantastic what you can find on the internet other than that uh, equipboard.com is another website i usually refer a lot as a starting point to create my tone when you go there and you search for the artist you will at least get a fair amount of idea as to whether what cabs or what amps or what pedals or you know what other microphones stuff like that they are using uh, it can be a good starting point to figure out the basics of that person's tone but keep in mind it won't give you any of the settings and all that stuff to get a particular tone but it'll tell you what amp or what you know gear they're using at least which is a good starting point for me. Um, so as I would strongly recommend you go and reference that website as well. Other than that, I think, uh, you know, read interviews from artists as well. Sometimes uh, you'll find articles from Guitar World or you'll find interviews from these people, uh, from the artists actually talking about the equipment and the gear that they use. So that's pretty helpful as well. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, next one, what is your daytime job when you're not fighting crime, Batman? <laughs> I am not Batman, first of all, I am vengeance. <laughs> If you've seen the new trailer, uh, trailer of Batman, you will probably get that hint. What is my daytime job? I work as a senior front end developer with one of the MNCs here in IT uh, in Melbourne. I've been here for almost three years and I really love what I do in terms of creating anything which is related to UI, whether it be it an app or be a website or be it any front end sort of a front end customer facing sort of a UI. Now, I've also been a designer, to be honest, not working as a designer ever, but I've all, always had my roots in the designing world. So in case if you're wondering, this T-shirt is also something that I designed with the logo, with the colors and the font and everything I chose for my band. And you can actually buy this T-shirt if you're in India. I also did the design work on all the album artwork when we came up with the album back in 2013. It's been seven years. Can you imagine that? But yeah, I did that uh, when I was in the band. 
and I also was very very uh, good with Flash back in the day when Flash was really really good. I created my online portfolio in Flash, and I'll probably put some uh, screen uh, screen grabs up here for you guys to see. Also, designed my own website in Flash, and I did a lot of other work in terms of uh, doing apps as well. So I really enjoy the UI side of things, and I really love doing what I do. Hopefully, that answers your question. Why don't you tell us about yourself? How did you end up moving from India to Australia? Where are you originally from? You mentioned that it's tough to balance your job, family, and the channel. Well, talk to me about it. <laughs> I am a full-time father and a full. I'm working full-time as well. So finding time for the YouTube channel is definitely something which is quite challenging at times. You know, sometimes I'm up late in the nights and doing takes and doing recordings and trying to get the best tone out of <laughs> the Axelvix too. But yeah, it, it also comes to the kind of support you have from your family. As I mentioned earlier, my wife is really, really supportive of me doing the channel. And that is one of the main reasons that I'm able to find the space to kind of sneak out and do my thing and really enjoy what I do. Where are you originally from? I am actually from India. I was born in a small place called Jamshedpur. I really love that town. From I did my schooling from there and then I moved to Delhi uh, where I started to did my higher education and started working as well. Um, it was there when I was part of different bands to be honest. Uh, why did I move to Australia from India? Well, to be honest, to have a better life. Uh, I'm not saying that life in India is not good i am extremely patriotic about the country and i feel i really enjoy living there and i miss it every day but it's just that i was spending more time tackling issues and problems which i should not be worrying about as a taxpayer and uh, i was not finding time enough time to spend with my family or to do anything of my own and this is probably one of the main reasons that when i moved to australia i started this channel because being here gives me that time to kind of spend with my family and also balance it by doing a YouTube channel as well. It was just quite tough for balancing everything in India. So that's one of the main reasons I moved here and for a better future, to be honest. I'm a Kemper user and have been contemplating purchasing an XFX3. Is the foot controller user friendly and are you able to morph sounds like I'm able to do with the Kemper? First and foremost, I don't own a foot controller. <laughs> So I cannot answer that question for you, sorry. Uh, but if you're looking to get the Axe 3 it's a fantastic unit. And uh, now I'm not going to do any comparison between the Kemper and the Axe 3 I don't own an, uh, any of them, but I've heard really, really, really good reviews about them. So uh, get, going to an Axe 3 is absolutely not going to be disappointing at all. Uh, if you haven't checked out Leon's video, Leon's videos, he uses Axe 3 all the time. So if that doesn't convince you then i don't know what will uh, it's an absolutely fantastic unit so go ahead and buy it i i wouldn't think twice are you able to morph your sound settings now i don't know what exactly you mean by morph if you're talking about seamless switching between scenes or between presets then yes i'm able to uh, the xfx2 is uh, pretty much well known for that i think all the fractal units are well known for that I, as I said, I don't own a foot controller, so I haven't experienced that real time, but yeah, I've heard really good things about them. Hopefully that answers your question. Great work. Are you going to get an FM3 anytime soon? The XFX2 is a killer product, but a little outdated. Uh, I do agree with you. The XFX2 is, is quite old by now and it has seen its good days and the number of updates that it's getting is quite low as well compared to the XFX3 or the FM3. Uh, I'd love to switch to an FM3 or an XFX3. I'd prefer to get an XFX3 to be honest given my situation that I'm mostly at home. The FM3 is very good for doing live and I have seen Leon Lee using it live when he was here in Melbourne. To be honest whether I'm getting one right now, I, not at the moment. I don't think I can afford one at the moment. If somebody could gift it to me that would be really fantastic. <laughs> but at the moment I cannot own it and uh, I uh, hopefully sometime in the future. Great question though by the way. Talk about how you got into playing guitar and what type of music inspired you. How have your tastes changed over the years? Fantastic question. So I started uh, listening to a couple of bands when I was back in India in my school days. I think the first couple of bands that I ever listened to was, uh, you know, Bon Jovi, Brian Adams. And I remember having my first cassette being gifted to me by one of my friends. It had all the best songs of Bon Jovi, you know, Runaway, Always, Living on a Prayer, you know, all that classic rock and I was absolutely blown away. At that time I thought this guitar playing is some sort of mastery which I cannot attain because we didn't have any YouTube tutorials or videos at that point in time or tabs or anything like that. 
In fact, the internet was pretty much starting out at that point in time. I'm talking about 1998 uh, back in India. So I saw another friend of mine kind of playing Summer of 69 in Hotel California. And I was like, wow, that doesn't look that hard. It's just uh, something which you need a little bit of practice with. And that's what actually got me into guitar. And within a few months, I was able to, you know, get into playing chords and then started strumming a bit of few rhythms and then started working out a couple of tracks by Bon Jovi and I was really, really into it. When I moved to Delhi, I met a friend of mine who introduced me to Dream Theater, Iron Maiden, Metallica, Megadeth, and I was like, wow, this is this stuff is fantastic. The moment I heard Dream Theater, I was like, this is it. I don't want to listen to anything else. Uh, Dream Theater is my favorite band, to be honest, and I love Petrucci's playing. Everything about his tone just amazes me and you know, buying his gear is a testament to how much I enjoy listening to his music. Over the years, I have started listening to many newer prog rock sort of prog metal sort of bands, to be honest. Pain of Salvation is one of my other favorite bands. I have had the privilege of seeing them live twice, to be honest. Uh, once in New York and once in uh, India. They are fantastic and their earlier albums are absolutely godlike. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, go ahead and do that. Daniel Gildenlow is an amazing songwriter and a singer. Over the years, I've also started liking the slightly mature side of music, which is blues and I haven't gotten into jazz, by the way, yet. I still can't understand it, I still can't comprehend it. I really like listening to modern jazz, blues players like John Mayer, for example. He's absolutely fantastic. Fusion players like, you know, Tom Quayle, for example, are really, really fantastic as well. The, the list is huge, you know, you can understand that probably. Well, that's pretty much it. That Those are all the questions you guys had. And if you have any more, please put them down in the comments below the like button. And in case you aren't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so, so that you can get notified about the next Q&A or the next video that I have. Another small question that I had was whether the guitar is fixed by now or not. Well, it's still not fixed. Lockdown in Victoria has been extended even further, but I'm trying my level best to see if I can get one of the pickups to work so that I can do the preset breakdown for you guys. So thank you so much for your patience on that. And until I see you in the next video, guys, stay safe, keep rocking, cheers.